Hey, it's Derek Jones and welcome to another episode of Rare Paintball Guns where we talk about some of the rare and not so rare paintball guns from our sports past. Today I have a really interesting marker um, that uh, I think is worthy of a, of a lot more time than I'm going to give it today and that is the Smart Parts Nerve. Now the Smart Parts Nerve has a pretty interesting history. It was developed in 2002, and it was developed at the same time as the Smart Parts Shocker, which is really responsible for this marker not being more popular than it is. So the Nerve was, in my opinion, light years ahead of its time. It was a tube stacked, very similar to an Ego or, um, or an Intimidator, that style of gun, but they were kind of ahead as far as ergonomics and body size and all those features. And it was designed to be a flagship marker. Basically, out the box, it was supposed to be tournament ready. And in my opinion, they were. Um, I have several of these impulses, and I, or I'm sorry, I have several, I have several of these uh, nerves, and I use them, and they hold up even today. In fact, if they had continued to be developed, if they had gone to bean break guys, um, I really think they would have had a pretty successful legacy. Um, the The problem that they ran into is the uh, Shocker, which was a phenomenal marker by itself as well, was such a dominant marker that there just wasn't much, didn't make much sense for Smart Parts to continue developing the uh, the tube stack design. And so in 2005, they discontinued the marker and it became vintage. <laughs> so... Uh, like I said, these were made, they were designed in 2002. They were delayed a couple years, and they were released, I think, 2004. And um, as far as features go, this is an early, early nerve because the the second generation nerves had a larger LPR chamber up here that allowed better airflow. I think that was their their thing. Um, and the first ones had a max flow regulator on the handle. This one actually has a foregrip max flow. And if I remember correctly, that was an option on the cheaper one. You could get it with the vertical um, regulator as opposed to the max flow tank regulator. Um, when they first came out, they were like $1,100. They were not cheap. And in 2004, that was quite a bit of money. But they were really amazing markers. Um, you could get it with a freak barrel. And uh, it, like I said, literally take it out of the box, screw a tank on it, go play a tournament. Um, they did have the reflective eye. Now the problem with the reflective eye is if you were using two-tone paint, it would see one side of the ball and not the other side. So you'd be out there playing and it would just stop on you. You'd have to actually turn the eye off to get the gun to shoot. So it was important that you selected correct paint, both with the early shockers that used the reflective eyes and the nerves. Um, neither of them were, were foolproof. However, at the time, eyes were still a relatively new development I tell people all the time, eye technology changed the game for us. So, like I said, uh, ergonomically, this marker is fantastic. It took the, uh, the, the Proto Matrix and the Die Matrix, an additional, well, this was designed in 2002. The Matrix wasn't this size till 2007. So, it took them five years to reach the ergonomics of the nerve. Uh, the Ego. Um, was very close to this uh, 2005 size wise it is an extremely light extremely comfortable marker and like i said i still shoot mine today i have several of these and i just love them to death so um let's break it down and we'll see what it looks like so the first thing i want to point out about a nerve that a lot of people don't realize until they actually see one is the mill work on these is fantastic it's very fluid it's very uh, lightweight there isn't really a lot of material on the marker to uh, add weight that isn't necessary. Uh, I already talked about the ergonomics. They came with a three-way adjustable um, double trigger. This is the max flow regulator. It was a. Uh, it was originally said that it could go 30 balls a second. Now I've never had mine near that, but at full auto, um, it has no problem keeping up with a halo or even a rotor. Uh, it has the the eye right here, which is ribbon eye. Reflective vision and a chop eye. The stock board is capable of ramping and a couple different modes. It has a built in LPR and magnetic double trigger and uh, a 
other than that, like I said, at this time, this was trend-setting stuff, and it was supposed to get up to 1,300 shots out of a 68-4500. And I am, in, I am inclined to believe that. Uh, the ones that I've used are really, really efficient. Um, so let's take it apart and see what we have. So this one has an all-American barrel. It is not a freak barrel. It is a two-piece, and I could change the back out to a freak. But and, and it may have had one, and somebody kept that and then just put an impulse back on it. I'm not sure. Um, but this is an all-American tip. And we have... Um, this, is, this is a change. So the stock one did not have this. This is a CCM uh, feed neck. The bolt is pretty interesting. You pull this plug, and that opens up the back of the gun. Now, so you've got to remove these. Uh, um, it has dual detents, and they strip out pretty easy, so you want to be really careful with them. Um, they're getting hard to find. I, I see them on eBay occasionally. Uh, these ones haven't been used in a long time. All right, so we have those. And then we have, remember, there's a really tiny tiny little size that is. And then you have the ribbon eye. These are problematic. These ribbon eyes, um, they have, like I said, they're extremely delicate. So you have to be really careful when you take the marker apart because they're very easy to rip. And sometimes, I can't remember if you want to disconnect on the body first or the grip. These are original Spark Parts grips and they're so old that they're actually becoming brittle. I, I just barely picked this one up, so I don't even know if this gun works, but we'll find out. All right, so the grips come off. Now, like I said, one of the problems with the shockers and the nerves is the way the ribbon connected to the body was extremely delicate, and you had to be really careful. Um, otherwise, you could rip them out really easy. So I, I found it was better just to con disconnect the boards right away to, to uh, make sure you didn't do that. Let's take that out. Okay. And I don't know, I don't think that was the stock frame screw, so it looks like somebody has put a oversized screw so maybe the frame was stripped out at some point because this doesn't I don't believe this is the stock the aluminum is pretty soft I don't believe it's 6061 I don't know what it is but it is not typically tough and that that looks <clears throat> that actually looks like that is the right size so apparently I'm wrong so there's the grip frame These regulators, I actually really like them. They, uh, they're not easy to rebuild, but they tend to be quite reliable. I'm not gonna get too crazy with it. These solenoids um, are good solenoids, but they do blow out. So there's something you need to be um, careful with. And a lot of guys, on the shockers, I was actually one of the guys who would double regulate just to protect the solenoid because they back then they were $75, and I'm sure they're not any cheaper today. So, um, you want to take it to the other And this one's been upgraded with a Empire gauge. So then you just tip this little bolt to the side, and the hammer comes out, and these are Delron bolts with a four drilling pattern. And they are, they do do better with uh, like a harder paint. Um, and that's about as far as I'm going to take this one apart for now. Um, so you can see this ribbon eye, and this one looks to be in pretty good shape, but there's no guarantee that it is. And this is nerve 1738. 
So if I wanted to, I would pull this, <coughs> um, and there's a valve right there. I'm not going to do that today um, because I haven't had a chance to test this gun. But if you were to just quickly field strip it, that's what they look like right there. So um, pretty simple. You have a LPR, and the bolt comes forward. It smacks that valve, it cycles the bolt, shoots the ball. It's a very common design that's been very effective in a lot of markers. So let's put it back together and we'll talk about it a little more. And there you have it. There is your field stripped and reassembled nerve. The valve is a little more problematic. Um, I've taken them apart that had the LPR uh, with the expansion chamber, but not this version. Um, and I just I didn't want to get into it until I've had a chance to actually test this one and see what it needed. Um, let me back it off and we'll talk about it a little more. All right, so there you have a quick field strip of the uh, Smart Parts nerve. These were basically victims of a, uh, of a very successful marker. Um, I think if the shocker hadn't been so dang good that we would have seen further development and refinement on this and it would have become a powerhouse in its own right. Um, in fact, I knew several tournament players at the time that were smart part players that actually much preferred the nerve to the shocker. I was not one of them. I shot a shocker uh, and then a SFT and a what was an NXT after that. Um, and I really, really loved my shockers. I still have them. I think they're phenomenal markers. But I do think that Smart Parts um, basically had to put their eggs in one basket and they chose the shocker. And who can argue with them because that was a monstrously successful marker. But uh, these, um, like I said, by the time they were done, they were selling for like 500 bucks. And when people finally got their hands on them, they were like, hey, now, wait a minute. I really like this. And and uh, I buy all I can find. If, if I find a used uh, nerve, I, I grab it. So if you see one in your uh, local ad, please uh, take my advice. Pick one up. They're a lot of fun to play with on the field, and they'll hold their own with anything today. Um, anyway, if you liked the video, please give us a like. And if you really liked the video, please subscribe. Or better yet, give us a like and subscribe at the same time. Uh, I really appreciate your support, and I will see you on the next video.